Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Wednesday, July the 28th, and we're live with the BBL TV Money Show. And we have with us, of course, like we do every Wednesday, Mr. Ron Garnett of Garnett and Associates. And we're going to be talking about business capital. We're going to be talking about problems that are plaguing businesses today, particularly African-American, black, black owned businesses. And we're going to be having a lot of fun. So join us if you have any questions about funding, if you have any questions about any problems you're having in business. And we also have an announcement that we're going to make about a partnership that we just got at blackbusinesslist.com. So we're going to be right back and we're going to be joined by Mr. Ron Garnett. Stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. We're the BBL TV Money Show. This is the show that talks about finances and money regard relating to your black owned business. I'm Stephen Wicks. I'm the founder of blackbusinesslist.com. It's a pleasure to come to you uh, to try to give you some of these solutions that you need to run your business effectively. We are joined this week by Mr. Ron Garnett of Garnett and Associates. He's the gentleman who created this platform called Cash to Fund. And of course we have this partnership where we give you access to capital through that platform. It's bbl.cashtofund.net. The link is going down there in the scroller. So Mr. Garnett, how you doing? I want you to introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about yourself this week. Oh, hi, I'm fine. How are you doing, Stephen? Uh, as Stephen said, my name is Ronald Garnett and my firm is Garnett and Associates. And we are commercial finance brokers and consultants. And primarily what we do is we help entrepreneurs, business owners, whomever get funding for their business if they are unable to get bank funding. And uh, so we use every means necessary and, and turn on every stone we can for all our clients to try and get them the money that they need. Perfect, perfect. And we're, we're so happy to have you. We want this to become the flagship program for these types of organizations like ours that have these black entrepreneurs, because it's, it's often access to capital is a huge problem. And we're, we're very excited to have you be a part of this new initiative to try to get make sure that these African-Americans have access to the capital that they've been denied for so long through the banks. Many, many people have been going to these banks, trying to get funding, and they've been turned down time and time again. So we're very excited to have you to be to create this platform, first of all, and to bring it to us. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So this week, of course, if you all have any questions about funding, those who are watching live, if you have any questions whatsoever, Mr. Ron is an expert in this area. He can help guide you through the path to get funded. We're talking upwards to, I think it goes all the way up to like $400,000. And he can give you funded if you have real estate uh, real estate deals or if you want to start a business, if you need, want to get a franchise. Matter of fact, one of the programs that we're going to create is kind of bringing you a package of here's a franchise, here's how much it costs. Uh, if you're interested in starting that franchise, then we'll get with Mr. Ron and put you on a plan to where you can have that franchise just kind of we want to get people started in business and we want to get you started right so we also have a partnership as i mentioned before with live plan i'm go ahead and, and go ahead and uh, announce it now to the world that we partner with live plan and live plan is a online business software where you can create your business plan and i'm talking about an extensive business plan everything you need to get started and get started right, we have the tools to help you. And you're gonna get a discounted rate. You can go to Live Plan directly and get it. You're gonna pay more money than if you get it through your blackbusinesslist.com membership. So, and then we're also gonna have uh, some training in there. We're gonna have some groups that are coming together, black entrepreneurs coming together, working on their business plan together as a group. Because even if you're in business and you started without a plan, trust me, you need to go ahead, dig into the software because it asks you all the right questions about your business, 
about your projections, your forecasting, about your competition. It's just it's chock full of, of good questions that will help you analyze your business, because I, I guarantee you, you're probably overlooking some things that can cost you some money. So we're very excited about this partnership. Uh, and again, you're going to be able to get in there and really learn about how to put together a solid plan because a lot of people fail because of lack of access to capital and because they did not plan properly. So those are the two biggies in terms of why businesses fail. And so at blackbusinesslist.com, we're going to address those issues. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, something that I saw in the news that, I, that, that, I, that troubles me. You know, <laughs> things trouble me from time to time. When I start looking at the news, um, I'm a worrier. Matter of fact, I think I found my daughter brought something to me, Mr. Ron. Okay. And I think I might be, what do they call it? Hyper, oh my goodness, what is this term? Hypervigilance. Hypervigilance, okay. All right. <laughs> I think I might have hyper hypervigilance. Uh -huh. uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, Oh, I call it being scary. Huh? Being scary. That's when we were, when we were growing up. We were scary. <laughs> <laughs> On the playground, I would call it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I would I, I prefer hypervigilance. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it and it, it it can come from like PTSD, uh yeah. post-traumatic stress and things that can happen to you. Uh, but uh, yeah, I definitely have a touch of that anyway. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I was looking through the news and I saw this article. Let's see, I'm going to bring it up here. Actually, it was some of the news that was on. Um, it was it was some of the news that was on our page, on our Facebook page. So I'm going to pull up our Facebook page. And uh, well, let me just let me see. Live, live TV, y'all. You gotta love it. So, stop screen. Could you hear that music? Yes, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's dope. That's our music on our homepage. Right. <laughs> um. So here we go. And here's our Facebook page. Let me just go ahead and bring it up now. And there it is. And boom. So on our Facebook page, we've got these, these articles on our group. So if you're part of our, we have, we have two um, main Facebook areas. We've got our Facebook page and we've got our Facebook group. The group is closed now. It used to be open, but it's closed to only members of blackbusinesslist.com. So if you're a member, you can go to our group and see what's there. Uh, you know, we've got lots of great stuff and we got some some cool little enhancements that we're doing to that. But you can go to our Facebook page if you're just a member of the regular public and see some great articles that we pull in to uh, just kind of educate you about what's going mm -hmm. on. So, like for, for instance, right now, American Express Coalition um, is offering business awards, uh, 25,000 grants to black businesses. So you can go there and learn about that. So I would make sure that you go to our page on a regular basis just to see what's out there and, and what's happening in the in the business community. So you can get access to all the things you need to get access to. But uh, one of the things that that our articles that I found and there's a black expo there, too. There's a lot of great, cool stuff here. Um, and I want to talk about this uh, with something that's going on in Stonecrest. That's pretty exciting as well. But um, one of the articles that came up was about the Delta variant and how the Delta variant could potentially put black businesses back even more. You know, everybody thought we were on the rebound. They got rid of the mask mandates. People got vaccinated. And now we're seeing that, hey, slowly but surely, I know the city of Savannah, Georgia, they just reinstituted the mask mandate. Right. Mandates, yes. So if we're not careful, so the CDC also. The CDC did as well. And, and the school systems are saying that everybody, some of them, are saying that everybody has to have a mask, even those yeah. who are vaccinated. So I think what we're having here is we're seeing that potentially we could be sliding back to where if you've got a brick and mortar and you rely on foot traffic, if we're not careful, 
you know, if we don't get enough people vaccinated, if this Delta variant uh, pops off again, you're going to be, you know, think about what happened to all these black owned restaurants. That's correct. During, you know, so you have got to have access to capital. Well, well, well yes. And one thing I'm, I'm not going to try and go too far afield, but uh, the capital we're talking about is uh, signature loans, unsecured capital. That means you get the money and you can do whatever you want with the money. It's not tied to whether you have collateral. So nobody's going to take your stuff back. I mean, they won't come in and take your uh, cash registers, your <laughs> your chairs and your furniture and whatever. Now, one thing about uh, when you mentioned the Delta variance is that uh, it's much more contagious if you have unvaccinated people, uh, they're more likely to catch it. If you are vaccinated, you can still get it. Supposedly, you won't get as sick, but you might get sick. Uh, you might be able to spread it or whatever, because even if you're asymptomatic, what the CDC was saying, that if you get it, you might not get sick, but you might become a carrier and make other people sick who are unvaccinated. So as a black business owner, or any business owner, but especially a black business owner, I'll get that in a second, is that you need to have money. Mm -hmm. in the you need to have a cash reserve if you can get it uh when uh corona virus see i guess covid19 first hit a lot of black businesses went on i think like 41 percent or more probably more than that that's what that's what the sba said it was like 41 percent of black businesses just went out of business primarily because the typical black business has about, I think, like 28 or 29 days of cash reserve that they could probably last about a month without an influx of cash. However, as a you know finance consultant and broker, if you go to a funder and you say, my business is not making any money. I'm about to close because I'm broke. I need mm -hmm. you to lend me some money. No one's going. No one's going to take that risk, because yeah. if somebody's going under, you might feel for them, but it won't get out of underwriting because you don't have any cash flow. You can't show anything. The mm -hmm. best time to try and borrow money. It's when you don't need it. You're not in dire straits. If you are a business owner and the virus has a, the Delta variant hasn't hit you yet, this is the time to try and get that cash reserve in. So if it does hit, you can ride the storm. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Now, yeah. Uh, now, one thing I will, and in the black community, it takes us longer to recover from an economic downturn. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an old saying that when white people get a cold, black people get pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's an old saying, yes. but it's true. Uh, uh, I was I, I I saw a show on public TV this I think it was this weekend about black entrepreneurship and they made the point that when the great depression hit in 1930s and whatever white america recovered in the 1940s and whatever it was the 1960s <laughs> late before black people recovered from the great depression because uh, during the Great Depression, uh, black unemployment was over 50 percent. Wow. So and as far as business wise, uh, we didn't recover until 59, 60, 61. 
from the 1930s. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I'm not trying to put on a political hat now, but uh, as a black business owners and entrepreneurs and black people, we are going to have to make a decision that nobody's coming to our rescue. Yes. You know, nobody's coming to our rescue to help us, okay? And mm -hmm. uh, you, uh, if somebody comes to your rescue, you're only going to get what they think you deserve. Mm -hmm. You might think you want this, your rescuer might think you don't deserve that much. So, you, I'm for self determination. I really am. Uh, I mean, I think black people have the will, the desire, the talent to do anything they want to. I mean, nobody, it, you know, has been like what black people were. I mean, uh, that was a, an article that came out about free slaves. They interviewed slaves that were actually free and they say it was just like taking cattle and just turn loose in the field. That's how we work. We didn't have anywhere to go. We didn't have any whatever, whatever. And we survived that. Right. Right. But well, and, and you know, that that's a part of this 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 whole story here today yeah. is that we are taking the reins and we are actually trying to be the solution for ourselves. We realize that for whatever reason, there are many. We traditionally are not serviced well by the banks. And, and, you know, they're to their credit. I don't know how real it is, but I've seen some banks trying to make those overtures to the black business community saying, hey, look, we understand that you've been locked out. So they're they're starting these initiatives, some of them. And, you know, I don't know if, you know, Black Lives Matter changed a whole lot of stuff with corporate right. America in terms of black folks. So I don't know what the motivation is. Uh, uh, but I see some overtures. However, it does not change the fact that you still have to qualify for these loans. And it's a lot easier to get funding through a program like what we've set up, getting that unsecured line of credit that you can use to operate your business. So that that's us seeing a problem and us trying to solve the problem for ourselves. So that's definitely a part of that story. Um, okay. and they, yeah, Go ahead. I, I wanna, I'm not trying to cut you off. I want to say this. It is fantastic that that banks are reaching out to the African-American community called the Black Lives Matter and things that went on. But we got to remember, all black people are not created equal. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the people they are reaching out to might be people who may not need our services. <laughs> mm. Yes. I mean, I think we could probably get them more money than a bank. Bank might get a better interest rate. But if you are making $100,000, $200,000 a year, got a 750 credit score, got collateral, uh, a, st a great job source of income, a bank might want to deal with you. You got a mortgage with them. They got your credit cards with them. You got your car through them. You got a long, got a savings account with them, with hundred, with a hundred thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars in your savings account. They might reach out to you. But one thing I may say is that you might go to that bank and ask for startup money. They probably will tell you no because they don't do startup loans. Okay. But if you are in business, they might give you twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. With those credentials, we could probably get you three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. At the uh, the interest rates will not be that much difference. So, you know, we have been used to going to a bank for our salvation. For what, yes. For when again that the, the public TV uh, show I watched, Abraham Lincoln was saying he's gonna give all black people 
40 till tillable acres and a mule for economic independence. When he was assassinated, they took that program and said, no, we're going to give you a freedom bank. We're going to give you money to start your businesses and you put your money in our bank and we will lend the money back to you so you can do what you want to do. Unfortunately, yeah. the bank was run by white people. And essentially, after all the black people and slaves and whatever put their money in there, the guy embezzled all the money and lost mm -hmm. it all. <laughs> wow. And the Freedom Bank closed. <clears throat> so all our wealth went down the drain. What we're talking about here with the black business list is self-determination. Yes. It's your money and put it where in a bank, because we're not a bank. We just give you the money. We put the money where you tell us to put it. But one thing I would say, don't put your money where somebody doesn't appreciate you. If you put your money in a bank and the bank doesn't want to deal with you or help you or give you any kind of considerations, move your money to somebody who will. There are a million banks in this country. And I'll put my money with somebody who will at least treat you with respect and not hey. te and not say, yeah, I know you got this money in the bank, but we can't do nothing for you. I'll put my money in the bank where they say, we're going we're gonna to give you some kind of consideration for it. So, well, I, I'm, I'm, you're, you're right on point. I hate to, to, to stop, stop your flow, but we've got somebody. Now, this young lady tried to get in last week. We were having some problems that she could okay. not connect. And so she's with us. She's backstage. I'm excited uh, okay. because I took Spanish in high school and uh, I actually only uh, know a few words. <laughs> and I, I worked at a Spanish mall at one point. This young lady has a business teaching Spanish. OK, uh, so we're going to go ahead and bring her in and. Um, let her introduce herself to everybody and tell us a little bit about her business. She's a black business list list.com member, by the way, I'm okay. proud to say. All right, let's go ahead and bring her in. Hey, how you doing? Hola, hola, hola a todos. Buenos dias o buenas tardes. Creo que donde tu estas es la tarde, sí. Hola a todos. Hey. Well, hello. Yeah. <laughs> bien, bien. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I will say one thing before we get started. Uh, I like Stephen, had Spanish in high school. Yes, sir. Or should I say Spanish had me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I, that, that, is, that is a common story. Um, so I, I must say good it's morning where I am. I'm, I'm CST, Central Time. You are the uh, EST, uh, I think. But good right. morning here, good afternoon there. That's what okay. I was saying in Spanish earlier. Um, but my name is Tasha and I uh, love Tasha more and I operate and own Tasha Teaches Spanish. And um, what you all uh -oh, have both said is very, very common, especially for melanated folks. Right. Um, we, we take it because it's mandatory in high school. Oftentimes our teacher isn't the best for different reasons. Yeah. And um, therefore, we're left at a deficit. Therefore, we don't care. Therefore, we're not even interested because the teacher doesn't have a way of bringing the interest out of us right and especially if you're melanated guys did you know like people see me i'm in arkansas and they just they say and assume that i'm not latino and that's common uh, but a lot of people don't know we are pretty much cousins there are right. afro latinos right just like we were drug over here in the uh slave trade our cousins are pretty much us were drug into brazil to guatemala nicaragua colombia right and I'm so sorry. sorry, my baby's in the back. Give me one second. I'm sorry. Guys. <laughs> okay. I think we're all getting used to that with the with the pandemic. We're all working from all home. Yeah. Calls, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Sorry about that. But just like no we were drug up, we were drug over here, we were drug up everywhere. And so there are people who look just like you and I, Ron, Steven, viewer, and they speak Spanish and that's their native tongue, right? But we don't know that we're not taught that in our schools everything's white, the book's white, the images are white or brown. You know, like uh, when people think of Latino, they kind of think of a Mexican hue, right? Yeah. But not mm -hmm. black, black, 
not like you yeah. and I. Now Afro Latino with locks, or you know something something else. So, um, what you all have said is is true for everybody, but I think especially melanated people because we don't see ourselves in Spanish. Therefore, yeah. why, why we connect. Well, you know, you you, brought, you bring up something very, very true and, and real because I remember watching on PBS. I like watching PBS and I like listening to NPR because you can learn so much. Yes, but sir. there was a show on about Cuba, uh, Cuba, Cuba, however you pronounce it. Uh, and there were some folks over there. They showed a neighborhood that was walking around. And I'm like, wait a minute. These look like black folks. That's it. Right. And, and I started thinking about all of the different countries where there are black people. And, you know, we know that the United States, we have this real messed up view of race and things like that. But mm -hmm. they're actually black. They may consider themselves culturally Hispanic or, you know, whatever they consider themselves. But they're they're us. They're our yes. people. Yes, and if we start to expand and learn these languages of how to communicate, then we can start doing international business deals. Right. Mm. So so we got to start expanding ourselves outside of just our little neighborhood, because mm -hmm. think about it. That's what folks do with us. How many people come into a black neighborhood that are not black and open up a business? That's it. Right. That's they're it. thinking beyond their their neighborhood. They're coming to our neighborhood and say, mm -hmm. let's give those black folks sausage links and uh, black folks like malt liquor. So let's sell them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, real, I mean, they're going into the community selling, you know, they're kind of coming in and, and sending their kids to college based off of selling things in the hood. Now, we need more people coming into the hood with like fresh fruits and vegetables and groceries and things like that. Uh, but that's for us to fix. Again, like Mr. Ron said earlier, we have to be our own solution. Nobody's going to save us. So we have to expand our minds to think more. Very true. Very true. And that's a good point to what Ron said as well. And when he said that, I thought about you all follow online or on social media, the man named King Randall. He has opened up a school called the X for Boys. And okay. um, this is not like to promote him like he doesn't know I exist. But he was kind of the first person that said that, or, that it, it stuck when he said it. He opened up the school for it's just for black boys. And because no one's going to come save us. That, that's, that was his push. Um yes. Um, so I, I agree, Ron. That's a really good point. Well, well you know, I think that, and, I, and I'm not stepping on any toes, but one thing about with, with a slavery mentality that what we have imposed on us, we were told never to trust ourselves, always depend on someone else mm -hmm. to for our determination. That has to change because you're always going to be in a secondary situation. So long as you got someone else making decisions for you in your community, mm -hmm. uh, you're always going to be um, under someone else's foot, be taken advantage of. Now, one thing I got to say, that's a human characteristic. That's not a white thing. I Amen. remember when I was in Amen. high school, uh, Andrew Young, former U.S. ambassador, came to speak to a little group of black guys who were, we were going to be politically active because we were working for somebody that was going to run for mayor of our town. And he said, everybody is somebody who take advantage. He said his daughter, when she was young, walked up to him and said, well, both you and mother have to work. But why does when she come home, she got to cook? and fix dinner for us, and you sit and watch TV. He said, I can get away with it. I'm a male chauvinist pig. I can get away with it. <laughs> I mean, it's not fair. <laughs> he was real direct in his answer. On it. When I get called on it, I, I, I'm going to take advantage of the situation. Yeah. That power, I'm not going to give it up because mm. I... Because I uh, I can't, I got it. So I'm going and nobody's gonna give up power. No one's gonna give up a system of authority. Now, if you're married and you both work and you come in and your wife's and you're married, and your wife says, Hey, I work just like you do. Why don't you fix dinner tonight? I said, okay, and I do it. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'll, I mean, that's fair. 
Are we to take, get, take something out or eat out or order something? But no one's going to save us. It's a human thing. Yeah. No one's going to save us. And we have to save ourselves. And, and when you were saying it's not a black or white thing, it's just human. That's very true. And in general, I've heard it put like this in basic terms. There, there is a pimp and a prostitute in every relationship. Ooh, that's, oh boy. That's, that's, I, I, I didn't make that one up. I, didn't, I, I come up with nice little quotes. So I didn't make that one up. But it, there's a pimp and a prostitute in every relationship. And it's very true because, and I sometimes, and we're talking about black business, right? And, and saving ourselves. One thing that I think is black people we need to be ready for when starting a business is know that not all skin folk are kin folk. And just because you're working with somebody that's black or your client is black, it doesn't mean the experience is going to be great. But don't let that discourage you. Like, you know, you, no matter who you're working with, somebody's going to upset you. But don't get, don't get, I guess, uh, uh, um, prematurely excited. Oh, you black, I'm black. Let's, let's, let's uh, collaborate. It's going to be great. No, somebody can still mess you over and they're your couple. Because like you, pretty much what you're saying, Ron, it's a human thing. So be ready. And one thing that I, I will say and is that just because you open a black business, there are a certain percentage of black people who will not do business with you. Who mm -hmm. I mean, there are, certain, there are a certain percentage of black people who, because of cultural things, think it's better to do business with a white person. Oh, yeah. Than a, a black person, and and one thing that I'm not trying to promote the the live thing, but it, it, I have to teach business plan writing. Is that important thing about a business is you have to know who your target market is, who is going to give you money for your for your product or service. It may not, and if okay, like okay, Tasha. You got a business. Yes, sir. If somebody says it's great you're teaching Spanish and you know, slap you on the back and say that's really great, but if they send their children to another place, a school to learn Spanish, that's not your target market. The target market is who's going to come to Tasha mm -hmm. and, 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 and pay Tasha to teach someone Spanish. And it may not necessarily be the people who slap you on the back and sound supportive of you. If your target market is people who are actually going to pay you money. Just like you, Stephen, you got the black business list. You might have a lot of black businesses who said, it's really great, Stephen, what you're doing. You are networking with people. You're trying to get people out there. You're trying to get people money, but they don't join the black business list. They don't pay their dues. <laughs> They don't advertise with you. <laughs> they, they go to somewhere else. That's not your target market. And uh, those well wishes, you can't take that to the bank. Those That's well true. wishes <laughs> don't help your bottom line. I mean, you, you know, and, it, and that, that uh, two things I want to address that you all said. First of all, let's give uh, Mr. Ronald Nelson. Uh, he's agreeing with you guys. He's loving the conversation. Sure. He's making some comments. Thank you, Mr. Nelson, for paying attention. Uh, and taking some time out of your day to be with us. Um, and if you have a business, let us know too. We love to give shout outs to businesses. So, uh, But also, I wanted to, one of the, the articles that came up, and I know these folks out there in Stonecrest, but they're, they're a part of the solution. They've started the new black Wall Street uh, mall, basically, out in Stonecrest, Georgia. So let me pull that up because I think that's worth mentioning. Are these the people that bought the 19 acres or 90 acres or no? No, well, no, they're down in, I thought they're in Central Georgia. I don't think they're in Stonecrest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these folks, um, it's uh, the Allen uh, family. They purchased, they did purchase a whole lot of land out there in Stonecrest. They've okay. got some amazing plans uh, for that. But they turned an old Target. There's a Target, a huge Target facility that closed down. And so they've turned this into a Black-owned mall. And it's got fresh, uh, fresh groceries, a jazz club. I mean, you restaurants, little uh, places to do hair. It is pretty phenomenal. Let me share the screen. That's great. Yeah, it's 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 pretty pretty amazing. That's, um, that's so a you can do a search and find out about the new Black Wall Street market in Stonecrest. Make sure you put Stonecrest so you'll find the right one. 
but this is it. And uh, I'm Looks telling like you, be there for Labor Day weekend. Then, yeah, it opens up on Labor Day weekend. Weekend, and and so they've done two events so far. They turned the huge parking lot into they did like outside festivals. Okay, they've done two so far, and so the grand opening is on Labor Day. And, and you know they've got video out there that some of the news stations have gone and done reports. Uh, and the guy who started this, Mr. Allen, I know him personally. I've, I've worked with him. And let me tell you, if he says he's going to do something, yeah, I mean, you know, he, this guy is amazing. I mean, you hear to know this guy's story. It's, it's pretty amazing. But it's pretty fascinating. I'm excited about it because you hear people talk all the time about what they're going to do. This guy, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hampton out there, his uh, right-hand man, these folks are the real deal. When they say they're going to do something, they do it, and they do it with excellence. And so that's part of, like, the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing with BlackBusinessList.com is to fix those problems. Of course, we know people don't like doing business with Black-owned businesses for a reason. A lot of times we're too laxed with our customer service. We're too lax with, with how we approach our business. And so this group, BlackBusinessList.com, we're going to be working no one's perfect, of course, but we're going to be working on excellence. How do we provide excellence? How do we make sure that we have these uh, agreements ahead of time? We know they're going to be problems. How are, you, how are you going to solve a problem when the problem arises? Those are things we got to think about ahead, like Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A has figured this out, right? They're, they have an excellent from start to finish experience for their customers. And so that's how we need to approach business have everything figured out. What am I going to do with somebody's upset, don't like my product or service? What's going to be their remedy? Because we hear over and over again, or, or what am I going to do if I'm running late and I got to start? And I said I was going to open my shop at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. You know, what? what is, we have to think about all these things because they go into the minds of people and it, it sticks with them. And then they don't want to do business. They're like, ah, see, I never should have done business with them. But so, this is what happens and this is what we've got to fix and we've got to hang in there. And sometimes it's ugly. Sometimes it's painful. But you know what? We got to figure it out. We got to work it out. And so that's what it's all about. And I wanted to bring that up because I, it's, you should everybody should know about it. We'll probably do some more uh, on this initiative. Thank you yeah. for bringing. I never heard bringing them up. I never heard of them. And I just like their Facebook page. So I'm going to go dig deeper after this. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. They're, yeah they're, it's, they're it's, it's, that's really that's really great. Um, you know. As somebody who deals with business funding and, and startups and established businesses too, is that what we said last week? It's not for everybody. Everybody can't do it. But but if you have that thing inside you where you say, "I want to try it and work it," we can help you get over the biggest hump is getting the money. Now, how you deal with it, that's that's a different skill set and probably different people that should be over here about how you get the money, how you build the money. But there's a great divide between um, getting the money to start a business and maintaining it. That's two different things. I, I don't know if I shared this with you, uh, Stephen, but that was this black restaurant uh, that opened up I heard about. And I thought I patronized it. And it was okay when I first went there. After about a couple of months, the owner was walking around a three piece suit, <laughs> <laughs> not taking orders, and, uh, <laughs> and had somebody. And basically, he did not order food. So you go in and try and order something. They, you had to say, well, okay, I, you don't have this, you don't have that, you don't have that on the menu. It's on the menu, but they don't have it. So I walked last time I thought, I said, just tell me what you got so I can't get something <laughs> out of here. But if next time we're back, it was closed down because mm. you got to be focused on what you're trying to do. It's a, it's easier getting the money than running the business. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me, interrupt you, Ron. I just want to like, I guess, piggyback because you're dropping some really good nuggets, especially to people. I don't, I guess, you're specifically talking to people who are considering a bit starting a business. But if not, that's who you're preaching to. Because, and even something you said a minute ago, I want to mention that. Sorry, I hope I hope I'm not doing no. anything wrong. Good. Not no, out of good. So number one, yes, 
doing this isn't for everybody. That's, that's one thing when I'm interviewed and people ask me about my business, that's what I tell anyone. Just like marriage, owning your own business isn't for everybody. If and it's, it's just like a marriage or it's just like parenting. Very difficult, stressful on most days. You question if it's worth it. All of that. Like, it's, it's really not. But we're in a season, Ron and Steven, as I'm sure you all know, where that's all that's pushed. Yeah. Be an entrepreneur. Own your own business. Work for yourself. Don't have a boss. Blah, blah, blah. And that idea of don't have a boss is a lie. Because if you're in business, who's your boss? Your customer. Your customer. Come on. Yeah. So, so, so really, anybody who's watching this who's considering this or new in business, don't get caught up in the hype. Because for some reason, we're in an entrepreneur season. I don't, I don't, it's good, but it leaves a lot of people with unrealistic expectations um, for themselves or how it's going to go. Another nugget you drop, Ron, to the new entrepreneur. And this is, I really could have danced on this one, but I didn't. <laughs> back to the point of just because people pat you on the back don't mean they're going to give you the money. Let me spin around. <laughs> Let me spin around. That's, I got the baby in my hand. That's all I can. Let me spin around. Ron, that is for the people. That's what everybody needs to know who uh, you keep tagging people on Facebook. You keep sharing a flag on Facebook. That's not going to bring in revenue just because you did it. It's a nice idea. And I did it too. I think everybody does it. But you buy, I think after year one, maybe you have to realize, hey, let me maybe run a Facebook ad. Let me do something on Google. Let me. Yeah. It, it, tagging me on Facebook and sharing a flyer three times won't make me act right. You can <laughs> still do that. I'm, I'm, I, when I say me, I'm the consumer. I'm, yeah, I'm, right. I'm the person you want to buy. You can still do that, but still try to go on a radio show, try to get on a program like this. Is you gotta do something else, baby. But a lot of people don't know that, Ron, and then they get mad. Nobody supports me. Family and friends don't support. Cause family and friends probably don't want what you have. I, uh, most of my friends like what I do. None of their children well, have come to me for a lesson. You know, so well, you know, you know what? You you're you're absolutely right. I'm gonna say that to your point about coming on shows like this, we created BBL TV for our members yes, so sir. for you to be able to come on a show and and people to know who you are it's the equivalent of your local tv station calling you up saying hey we would like for you to be a guest think of all the exposure you get people pay a lot of money to pr professionals to send out press releases so that they can get exposure on television so we created our own network so that somebody like yourself can come on and talk about the benefits of your uh, uh, either yourself or your children learning Spanish. I can't tell you how many ads I've seen in the Atlanta area advertising that they want bilingual people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So if you're in management, if you're in business and, and you're especially retail management and you're bilingual, that's a game changer, especially in an area like Atlanta because there's a lot of, you know, his mix, uh, excuse me, uh, there's a lot of Spanish speaking people here. And so you set yourself apart by being bilingual in, in a lot of cases. And so it has a lot of value, but you have to find those people. How can you solve people's problems? If you can solve people's problems, you'll never worry about money because yeah. people will pay to have their problems solved. So if you're not getting customers, it's like you're not finding the right people with the with the right who have the right problems. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to match their problem with your solution. So that is an excellent point. That's, that, that's very true. And again, you have to, you know, because I started out teaching business plan writing. And one of the biggest things is know who your target market is. Who do you direct your marketing to? Who do you, who do you contact to say, I'm selling this problem? Well, I'm solving this problem for you. I mean, people buy benefits. They don't buy products or services. They buy the benefits of those products or services. Mm -hmm. So, but who actually is in need of them or who wants them? That's a very, 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 you know, difficult uh, thing. Uh, so you have to put some time and effort into it. Uh, and... It, you really, all right, I was, I would say with me, when I first started doing this, I have financial products for almost anything. I'm a broker, so I got all kinds of different products, not just one product. I got a dozen different fi financing products. And I figured that, hey, I got a, a problem. I got a product where people who have bad credit scores, like 550, I can get 
we can get you at least looked at in the door to be looking at, uh, uh, you know, funding. I just assumed that I just get people just running through the door, and it didn't happen <laughs> <laughs> because uh, a number of people uh, didn't th- thought I was representing the mafia, criminal ex. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was a loan shark. I said, no, these are banks. <laughs> the bank you go to <laughs> is behind the scenes working with this funding this funding people to uh you know to uh you know using unsecured you know funding. You know, basically unsecured you know funding is money that is non guaranteed bank money. So and so even though a bank, I'll say one other thing, you mentioned about the bank working with uh, the black community, bankers still have one thing they don't want to tell you about is underwriting. No matter how many people they reach out to and say we want to help you, a loan does not go through until it goes through underwriting. And, and I, I deal with that every day, underwriting. Underwriting, they look at you and say, well, this person, there's a good risk, this person, a bad risk. No matter how many times they put their arms around you and say, I'm going to loan you this money, underwriting got the final say. If they say you don't have you don't have enough collateral, uh, you don't have high enough credit score, you don't have enough money, seasoned money in the bank. Uh, so even if the banker says yes, the president of the bank says we won't loan you this money, underwriting says no. Underwriting has the final say. Mm-hmm. And what I'm saying with that is you need to have alternative sources of trying to get money, especially if you are in a business and you want to expand your business, want to start a business. Look for alternative sources. I don't know if I told a story before. I started my business because I was teaching business plan writing. And students were supposed to get a government loan once they finished the class. They finished the class, the government program fizzled out. It never happened. So they came back to me and said, where do we go? We just spent all this time writing a business plan. We got to decide where we get the money. Mm. I said, well, go to the bank. The bank laughed them out the door. They said, you got you to gotta be in business two years to get bank funding. They don't tell you that. <laughs> you gotta be, so if you're a startup, you automatically disqualify once you walk through the door. That's when I started looking around for different programs to work with startup businesses who could mm-hmm. give them enough money to get them to succeed. Right. I mean, we've talked about before getting enough money to get yourself in trouble. So if Just you need, <laughs> if you need hundred thousand dollars, and the and you can get twenty, you got enough to last about a three or four months. Then you run out of money, and you're just gone. We've all seen this. Restaurants, black restaurants, will start off undercapitalized. Mm-hmm. It will start off. Everybody's there. Well, it's, you know, it's, you it's know, part then they go out of business because they don't have any capital. Part of that, and I'm glad this is a good segue. And Ms. Tasha, I'm glad you're here uh, with us. And we're going to pull up your. I'm going to give everybody a sneak peek. Uh, we're going to talk about that too, because uh, I'm winner of the big pitch. I mean, you know this. It's just getting more and more interesting as I dig into her website, guys. This is just this this lady something else. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> but I wanted to talk about, you know, as it relates to access to capital. Um, I think that people oftentimes get so excited about this business. And like you said, Mustasha, everybody's talking about you ought to be an entrepreneur, et cetera, et cetera. And everybody's caught up into the hype. And they don't do the proper planning, right? Mm-hmm. They're, they're not doing the proper planning. And so if you know how much you're going to need, 
then maybe you don't start until you're ready. Right. Mm. Mm. Maybe you start a business and you're not ready and you were up and fine. You had enough money to buy like the, the business plant, business cards and all of the stuff and the shirt. Maybe you got your logo on it. You got your website, et cetera. But because you didn't plan properly, you maybe only had a few months worth of cash available to run your business. Mm. And, and like you said, you might have put it out there. Hey, I'm in business and you're waiting for everybody to just knock down your door to try to get to you. Mm -hmm. And you found out, oh, I got to actually market to people. Oh, I got <laughs> I to actually, you know, find some people who want my services. and They mm -hmm. won't just build it and they will come. May not work. That, right? You're making some good points. Oh, OK. Can I comment or you, you yeah, have some more? No, go ahead. I'm cool. So for that person, I would say, because I'm even learning that now, I'm becoming less and less a one man shop. But definitely in the beginning, I was the, you know, giving the service, doing the ads, trying to learn the managing plan. But one thing I did in the beginning as well, I didn't quit my day job like this. This was a side hustle for ooh, probably probably what year is this? The first two years. Thank mm -hmm. you, Ron. <laughs> that's that's sad. I have to ask you. <laughs> But um, we've been in business since 2018. So the first two years, this was my side hustle. So I had a part time that brought in real income. And then my husband was very supportive. So he you know, took on quite a bit in the home as well. But I always had a, a job bringing some kind of money. So it wasn't just I'm quitting my job. Forget this. I'm going in business myself. No. So to that person, the person you kind of described, Stephen, you think you have a little bit now, but you don't know if you're going to have it for long. Don't quit your job yet or, or keep keep something on the side just to stay afloat, because it, especially if it's a service. Now, if it's a product, I don't I'm not a professional, but I imagine products are about depending on the product year round. But service service businesses often have high seasons and low seasons. Yeah. So at least for mine, I'll, I'll speak for myself, you know, mm -hmm. um, and we have a, have a lot of major wave of interest in the summer. How much interest? And we're kind of have some interest going into school too for tutoring, I'm sure. But then in the winter, where's a do do you know a little less? Mm -hmm. So um, you you're gonna have your high and your low seasons in a lot of industries. So if you're just starting out, and yes, you're excited you have you have a little something saved up. I would still do something else on the side to make sure you can get through until you really do blow up. Until you really do get some customers going. Because you can't wait around on the people you think are coming because they probably not. They will not be there. I want to say one thing, though. you put up that live plan. When you write a business plan, because as I said, I'm a business plan writer. That's how I started out in this, is that people generally underestimate how much money they're going to need to start it. They normally underestimate it by two-thirds. That's what the SBA says. So if you think you need, you know, 30,000, you really need 90,000. Think you need 5,000, you need 15, so forth. And they also underestimate how much they're going to get from customers. They yeah. underestimate their customer input because they look at it that, hey, I love this business. Everybody's going to love it. Everybody's going to pay money <laughs> for it. So yeah. you... And, and so you got to say, well, and I, cause I've dealt with live plan before, uh, with, is that they will actually give you ratios about businesses like yours and how much they make. And if you if your ratios are off, you're saying, well, you are overestimating by what this business is going to make by 200 percent compared to all of these other businesses that are just like yours. So you need to scale back your income projections. All right. So, so Mr. Ron has already segue us into talking about uh, live plan. So I'm happy to announce, guys, that we have a special partnership with live plan for blackbusinesslist.com members. So we've we've worked out a special deal where you, you have a special cost, a huge discount to take advantage of this software. It's a business planning software. And I want to go into it a little bit, um, just some of the features to let you know what you're going to be having access to. We're going to be releasing this on the top of next week. Okay. So um, I just want to share a little bit about what this software can do. 
it will help you think about all the things you're not thinking about, like Mr. Ron said. And, you know, you may be starting your business with not enough capital to, to that. will This plan will let you know that, hey, I need more money. Right. It'll help you put your projections together. It has over 500 sample plans. OK, um, it will help you do a pitch. I, I saw Ms. Toss, you did a pitch competition. Yes, sir. I this too. Will help, you yeah. did, too. This will help you put together a sample pitch. Um, it's a very trusted software platform. A lot of industry experts use it. And we're going to give you access to it at a discount. So, again, business planning, they have, uh, you know, we're going to have a, a whole group. We work together as a group, put our plans together, because even if you're in business, a lot of people have not actually gone through and done a proper business plan, even though they're already up and running and operating. And what you will find is that you will find opportunities. Uh, you know, when I worked in management at Walmart, we used to call problems opportunities. <laughs> so you might find opportunities to fix. Right. Because maybe you're doing something and it's not profitable. Or maybe, again, like I said, you're not thinking about all of the little uh, nuances of, of, of your operating system. And so this will help you answer those questions. It will help you come up with, look at that, forecasts. You can put in your costs. You know, how much is, is it cost you to provide the service? If you're using software, how much is that? You know, all of those things. And it's, it can also sync with your QuickBooks so that you can look at what you're forecasting versus what you're actually making. It has a lot of great budgeting and, and everything you need. It's, it's just packed full of reports and data to help you operate a business, uh, you know, the right way. And so we're giving you access to this with a special rate and a special plan and we're going to talk more about it in live plan. The folks over at live plan is actually going to come do a show with us mm -hmm. to talk about it. OK, so this is going to be a great deal. I guess Ms. Tasha had the baby. It was yeah. she has some. <laughs> live you know, now I'm back. Yeah. Now, you know, that's really great. Now, can I say one thing? I'm not trying to rain on a parade. OK, right. But, uh, with the software, you still have to know your business. Mm -hmm. And you've got to do some work to understand your business. Uh, now, I've, you know, I've used it before with other, with, I, as I told Stephen that before, I've, I've used the software, I'm familiar with it. But when you have a business, don't underestimate the need for study mm -hmm. and becoming uh, an expert in your business. Nobody, but nobody should nobody should know more about your business than you do. Study all the time. Take buy books, do webinars, whatever. Nobody knows everything, but you should try and know as much as you can about your business and that will help you with the business plan because the business plan is going to force going to ask you question you got to find an answer somewhere and the mm -hmm. answer is studying uh, mm -hmm. when i started my business when my students came to me uh and asked me where do i get funding I, you know it took me a year of really studying to find out about well where do i go for money now, the first place I went was a bad source. <laughs> I mean, the first the first place I went was a, a government program that ran me around like a dog chasing his tail. They, they, they promised me money, did everything they said do. I jumped through a thousand hoops, and then they told my client, no. No, we're not going to fund you. I said, why? Well, we just decided not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, no, it, it really told me that, well, we are not going to uh, fund that type of business. And I was shocked and, and upset and hurt because they made me write a business plan for them, mm -hmm. for my client, mm -hmm. which I did. <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote a business plan for them. 
sitting there and say, oh, what a great business plan. And they still told me no. And I spent months on that, you know, working with them, be told no. That's when I started going to different sources. And if you're an entrepreneur, don't take everything at face value. Mm -hmm. Some people will say they're going to work with you. And they will say, we got this program. We got this where we can help you. And they're lying through their teeth. They're just trying to... <laughs> <clears throat> they're trying to get you to sign up with them uh, work with them maybe pay them some money or whatever and they are so they're offering certain kind of programs that they're not offering uh, so verify everything I mean just because someone says they can do it verify everything 100% verify everything and and I, uh, you know, work with people who can, uh, who, who, who communicate with you. You can't find, you can't get somebody on the phone. You can't email. That's not going to be a good person to work with. You need to find an alternative. Everybody got a competition. Everybody yeah. got to to somewhere. So yes. don't be afraid to investigate uh, whatever. Now, one reason I don't have a problem with doing, you know, cash to fund or bbl.cashtofund.net, I know some of the profits that are out there for unsecured funding. I've been broken with them. I've worked with them. I'm a broker. I got contracts with a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. But I'm sending you to a source that will get you more money with less qualifications. That's what I'm saying. Is that well? Yeah, <laughs> and I, that's that's something I picked up on, Mr. Ron. And again, is you starting this out of a passion and and out of a a sense of trying to come up with a solution for those folks that you work with. That's just the type of entrepreneurial study, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurial genesis that everyone respects you know when you personally had a problem with something and you say hey it's got to be a solution out there somewhere and you actively put together a solution and then offer it to other people that's exactly you know like one of that's always the best story for uh an entrepreneur when they start a business out of you know some type of personal experience and so that's one thing that always res always resonated with me about your business um but we're running out of time we're we're at 119 Eastern Standard Time, Tasha. Uh, so, <laughs> so we're going to bring up Tasha's website because again, I, I saw some things on there that are kind of are interesting. Then we're going to bring up CashToFund.net and let you see, you know, what that's all about. If you if you need business funding, you know, just show you how easy it is to get started with that. But let's go ahead and bring up Miss Tasha's website. Bam, there it is. Look at those companies that she served. She's trying to let you know right off the bat. I am somebody serious. I got it going on. I've got all these testimonials. I'm a winner of the big pitch. Tell us what's going on with that. What was up with that that competition? So that through that um, competition, I learned people like you when you're a winner. That's when I saw a major increase in my business, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I already noticed that idea from pre other people I know when they won competitions, all of a sudden people were like, Ooh, ah, you know, it's something about winning that'll put you on another level. But that was the first pitch competition I'd ever done. Definitely didn't think I would win. You know, I guess that's common. That no matter how great you are, you always kind of have a doubt. Right. But, um, this was last year in 2020. So first pitch competition edition I did, I think it was maybe three to five minutes, something like that. And it worked out. Um, for my category, I won for my category. That competition was divided like by how much revenue your your company or business made. Mm -hmm. And then another pitch competition I won later that year was Communities Unlimited, similar format, just pitching your business and your idea, or well, if you're already in business, or your idea. And I was already in business. I had been for t two years at the time, so both great experiences made me grow up a lot and definitely um, put me in a new uh, limelight of, of sorts. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm looking at your services here, and uh, looks like you got a team of folk that yes, are helping. Uh, that, this is awesome. 
Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. But yeah, we are currently, and I know this can't be for everybody out there, but right now we're working on our um, Spanish spelling bee. So that's in October. And this will be uh, the first that I know of in the region and probably the state of Arkansas. When I asked around, I kept hearing no. So I'm assuming it's the first. And so we're pulling up. Uh, Right now, promoting that and publicizing that, free to participate, free to view, uh, and we're very excited about it because for the Spanish-speaking child, the, ch the Latino child maybe, it's a great way for them to celebrate the beauty of the language and connect to their roots. And then for the English-speaking child, it's a great way to get a little taste of Spanish that's not in the classroom, right? Mm -hmm. So very, very mm -hmm. excited about that. Wow. Okay, guys, uh, she's a member also of Black Business List. Um, so you can uh, check her out there when you browse in the directory and you uh, want to look around. You can see her there. Um, and uh, you, Stephen, I appreciate you. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and step off the call if that's OK, so I can get ready for another call. But this has been great. And Ron, you had a lot of great nuggets, too. This was wonderful. Thanks, guys. All right. You okay. take care. Take All care. Right. Yeah. So, man, um, guys. This, this is the type of membership that we have that's full of people, full of resources. You can partner with her, you know, go to the directory and search around. You'll find these folks. You can reach out to them and say, hey, I found you in the directory. I think that we can partner together on an initiative, you know, whatever. This is what it's for. And again, if you're a member and you need funding, you know that every Wednesday at noon, noonish. We're going to do this show and you will have access to Mr. Ron and Mr. Ron can answer any question that you have about funding. You know that. And I'm going to open this up to all of these different shows on, on these channels in our network. And so you're going to have a lot of opportunity to go on different shows and let people know who you are. And I'll always promote the fact that you're a blackbusinesslist.com member. So this is a perk of being a member. We have a network. And we're going to have all these different shows where you can come on and let people know what's going on. So with that being said, I want to pull up uh, cash to fund bbl.cash to fund.net and let you see how simple it is to start the process so you can get money, cash money, guys, cash money to run your business, to uh, deposit it directly into your account. So, Mr. Ron, I'm going to pull it up if you want to tell them a little bit, just a brief little synopsis about how easy this process is. Well, it's a very straightforward and transparent process, too. OK, and it is not some mysterious process. You know what the costs are up front. Uh, one, the only real cost you're going to have to have is to you got to open up a credit monitoring account where we can you can open up this credit monitoring account and you upload your credit information to us so we can do a soft pull so there's no real hard pull now what's the cost i checked it out this morning you can get a soft pull an account open for one dollar for seven days you open it up, get it done, upload it, and if everything is, you know, fine, you can cancel after seven days. That is your out-of-pocket cost, one dollar, to maybe get a hundred, two, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars. If you want to risk a dollar for that. Then money, okay. <laughs> I gotta say, you too, you yeah, yeah, you too conservative. If you don't take that risk, right? So, if and so now, now the the low is is five eighty. That's true, but not really true. We go down to five fifty. We'll at least consider oh. five fifty. Wow. Now you won't get a whole lot of money, but you might get some money, and okay. money is relative. I mean, sometimes three thousand dollars as much as a hundred thousand for somebody else if you really need it. So that's and you got to have an income for like maybe thirty thousand dollars a year. That's to show you can pay it back. And one thing that uh, I, I got to emphasize is that this is a funding source that's signature loans. So 
you need to have maybe three credit lines. That's three people that you have credit with that you're paying back. Could be a gas card, uh, you know, uh, you know, a credit card, an account with a department store to show the funder, hey, I'm paying people back through these, these trade lines. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's very, that's important too. So mm -hmm. now what you got to produce, if you're working for somebody, you got to give them your W-2 form. You got to uh, give them your credit information, uh, avoid the checks or nowhere to put the money. They want to look at your uh, checking account for like maybe two or three months to make sure you got a valid account. Uh you, that's what calls them. They don't want somebody to open up an account. They put the money in there and they pull the money out because they don't have any history in that account. They want to just verify that you who you say you are, utility bill. And that's uh, based driver's license, front and back. That's basically it. I mean, okay. uh, that's basically it. I mean, uh, they don't really require you to have a financial statement a profit and loss that uh an accountant puts together they don't necessarily want you in unless you're self-employed they want an income tax for two years to show that what your income is but if you're a w-2 employee you need your w-2 form uh and you get pre-qualified and you decide how much of that pre-qualification you want now, one thing we can do, I'm sorry, a commercial here, but it's true, is that we will spread the risk of giving you a signature loan. Say what we will do is, based on your history, one bank, bank might say, well, we think they have risk for 20000 Well, someone says, well, I think it's uh, 10. Somebody says, well, I think it's, you know, I think it's, it's 30. So you got 30, 20, and 10. Mm -hmm. You combine those, and that's what your funding is. Okay. So you add the 30, the 20, which is 50, and the 10, which is 60. So you probably could get a $60,000 funding. Mm -hmm. And the interest rates might vary from bank to bank. But you do on the average. Say mm -hmm. the average said different the different uh interest rates or whatever, it might come up to 10%. So now I let me I have a question about that. Sure. So when with the let's say if there's three different uh lending sources that that make up the the amount that you get, right? Right. Um are those reporting three different separate times in terms of like your credit? Future credit worthiness is that showing three different lenders or is it three combined? Different three different lenders. So, so you're going to show us having three different paying back three different loans. Correct. Oh, interesting. Yes, it would. They report the three because they are individual loans that are combined through us to get mm -hmm. you more funding. That's why we say we can get you more funding than go to a bank. You go to one bank. And you get a loan for like you go to the, get the ten thousand dollars. You now go to another bank and get the thirty <laughs> or the yeah. twenty. You're gonna be stuck with that ten. So mm -hmm. with our service, you can combine all of those to get you the sixty thousand. Yes. So you might go. You might get twenty at one bank. You or ten. You might get sixty through us. And it is reported to three different and three different lenders because you're paying back three different loans just to combine, which you say, Oh, I'm paying back three loans, but it's like you're paying back a sixty thousand dollar loan, it's just a different sources. So it's the same money, you're just flipping different checks. Yeah. So as you make those successful payments, that's gonna really kind of enhance yeah. your credit worthiness. It's gonna show Correct. that and you're yeah. And you so you and there's no prepayment penalty, so you could pay it off early, but then you're in a better position to go back and get more money. Yes, I love it. I love so, it. This is a great program, guys. Um, so it's 
bbl.cashtofund.net. The link is in the the, uh, the 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 description of the you know the uh, on Facebook if you're watching it on YouTube if you're watching it is there. So you can just click the the link directly and go to it. And one thing I will mention is that we try and work with people. I mean, now some people, we can't help everybody. I mean, some people, uh, we got to just say, come back later. Now, some mm -hmm. people, we might say, well, you got to pay off. You got to pay off this collection. You got to pay off this bill. You got to pay your credit cards down. But we will tell you what, you, we'll give you a pathway to get funded. I mean, yes. we just don't tell you no. <laughs> we'll just say, well, you can't get it now because you got this, this, this issue. Now, some people will say, well, I don't want to deal with that issue. Well, then you can't get funded. But <laughs> right. what I'm saying is that what I said before, funding is the easiest part of this process if you want to be in business. If you think it's too much trouble to pay off like a hospital bill or go out and get a couple of credit cards to build the trade lines up, you are going to get discouraged being in business because you're going to have a thousand times more issues than that in business. Yeah. <laughs> All kind of issues coming out the wall in business. Right. So that is minor compared to what you're going to run into if you start a business. Well, well, you know, more than that, Mr. Ron, I think it represents a, whenever you have that issue, um, you got somebody who's thinking short term, either they're trying to get money because they, they desperately need it because they're in some type of bind and they need a bunch yeah. of cash or somebody who's not used to thinking long term. Uh, okay. If, if, if this guy's saying, all I got to do is X, Y, and Z, and he can give me access to thousands of dollars in terms of lending source. Uh, there's no problem with, with doing it unless you, I need it now. I need it now. I need it now. And, you know, if you're that type of person, I don't know how successful you're going to be because you have to be able to forecast things out for a long period of time sometimes in order to be successful because things don't just happen just because you want it to happen. So, um, you know, you have to be the type of person that to say, I'm going to do what I need to do today so that I can have what I need tomorrow. Right. And, you know, and funding is not a one shot deal. I mean, funding is a long term deal. I don't yeah. care if you are somebody starting out in business, working a, a, a side job or a side gig. As uh, uh, Tasha said, she started as a side hustle or whatever. Or if you Ford or General Motors or Exxon Mobil or whatever, you're going to need source of funding. You're going to need mm -hmm. to say, well, you know, I need to get some money to do some kind of project. I will need some money to drill in, uh, you know, the Atlantic Ocean, <laughs> the Gulf of Mexico. If you uh, if you are, you know, Shell Oil, uh, you know, you're going to need that kind of money. They. Uh, and big businesses do it all the time. Mm -hmm. If they are going to do a uh, dig a gold mine or uh, a drill for oil, they don't go in their cash reserves and pull all that money out. <laughs> they actually borrow money for a project and take the tax deduction <laughs> for that money. Right. So when we say as business owners, I don't have any debt. But you don't have any growth either. I mean, <laughs> I mean you. I mean, you're right where you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Ron, thank you so much. I'm, I'm gonna do one more thing before we go because we mentioned it and talked about it. I want people to know about the new Black Wall Street market out in Stonecrest. So I pulled up the website. I want to just show that and let you see what's going on out there. Um, this is their website. It's their logo. And you can click around and find out what's inside this amazing facility. They're going to have a food court. They're going to have a sundry store, Art Avenue with, you know, art from around the world, a jazz club, a fresh foods grocery store, 
a bakery. They've got a restaurant, Big Mama's Porch, and then you know it's like a big porch, okay. uh, and and you go and look at. I mean, that's the first the facade of it on the outside. Events, meeting space, <laughs> it, it's it's pretty elaborate. And like I said, um, I'm familiar with the folks out there that's developing this, and I'm telling you, it's going to be first class all the way. So check it out. The link is in how, the. Uh, how do you find it? Just in case I want to come, I know, I know Stone. It's off Stone of Press. I it's off of yeah. I isn't it? Right. Yeah. It's uh, right across from the mall. Um, the uh, mall out there, Stonecrest. It's it's uh, the old Target was across from the mall, and they, that's the the uh, property that they, you know, okay. totally renovated and, and changed. Uh, so, well, but see, yeah. It, Steve, everybody is from Atlanta like you are, so we don't we did so, <laughs> so <those> directions. <laughs> as to, uh, that's in what's it, uh, Clayton County, something like that? Uh, oh, DeKalb County. It's so DeKalb that's County. the website. Yeah, the, the <laughs> link is in the uh, in the show uh, okay. description as well. But All right. Uh, NewBlackWallStreet.co okay. is how you can find uh, information about that. So. It, it's just a, <laughs> in Atlanta. Think everybody lives within the, <laughs> lives in, <laughs> within the perimeter. Okay. Yeah. That, right, that, right. That's a saying outside the perimeter. That's a little thing called Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> that's a place outside of Atlanta called Georgia. That some of us live yeah. outside. outside. We might be yeah. familiar with it, but. A little direction would help some of us. Yeah, would help. Okay. All right. So, yeah, you can go to the website. It has all the information. It's probably got directions and all that good stuff that you might need to go check it out. But if all you're right. in the Atlanta area, um, it's, it's definitely worthwhile. Check them out. They're going to open it up on Labor Day weekend. All right? Okay. So this has been a great show this week, Mr. Ron. I appreciate you. And uh, all right. I know that we've got some people going through the process right now to get funded in, in various stages, and I can't wait to – bring them on and we have like the testimonials from folks that are going through this program with you. Okay. So, all right. So any last parting words before we leave out? No, I uh, just want to say have a, uh, you know, safe and good uh, rest of the week. And just one thing is that <sighs> climbing a mountain isn't always easy. I slid down a few times myself. I'm sliding down one now, but you got to climb back up. So there ain't nothing like getting to that top, and there is yes, hope sir. because you can make it if you if you keep on trying. You eventually get there. Yes, sir. That sounds like a good word. Sure. All right, Mr. Ron, I appreciate you. Appreciate everybody for for watching. And if you're watching on the replay, definitely click some of those links and support uh, the guest that we had. Tasha teaches Spanish, and also uh, the program we had with Mr. Ron. BBL.cashthefund.net. Click there and get started with your just a quick little application just so you can start getting access to capital. And if you don't need money, click it anyway, because that's when you're supposed to actually try to get the money when you don't need it. Please don't wait till you need the money right. to, to click that yeah. link. Yeah, don't wait till they come in to close your doors with, with <laughs> to, to, for, in foreclosure to uh, click the link and ask for the money because it will show up in your credit report. They, they're very good about show, about collections and foreclosures being in your credit report which would disqualify you. Right. So right. Do it when you are, once you get the money, they aren't going to take it back. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, right. you get it now and then maybe you can avoid even going into some of these dire circumstances that a lot of people find themselves in. All, All right. right. So thanks, Mr. Ron. We'll see everybody next week. All right. Uh, until then, take care. You too. All right. Bye. Alrighty. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.